Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everybody. Today presentation is about the actions and clinical application of indirectly and mixed acting sympathomimetics. Revision what we have talked about in our last presentations. When we talked about sympathomimetics, we classify them into two major groups. The first major group are the directly acting sympathomimetics, which act directly as an agonist on adrenergic receptor. And we have said that these drugs they differ in selectivity, where some of them they are selective to certain adrenergic receptors, some of them they are non-selective and they differ in potency at the adrenergic receptor. We talked in our last presentation, three presentation, about the directly acting and what are the most important actions and clinical application. Today we'll talk about the indirectly acting. The second group of sympathomimetics are the indirectly acting sympathomimetics and we call them indirectly because they act through the release of noradrenaline from the adrenergic nerve terminal. We have explained before that these drugs they have to be uptaken into the nerve terminal using the uptake one mechanism. And this is the same uptake mechanism which, you, which is utilized by noradrenaline. Once they enter the nerve terminal, they will displace noradrenaline from the storage vesicles. And this displacement, noradrenaline, will be released and it will act on adrenergic receptor, whether they are alpha, beta, 1 or alpha 2. So that's why they are called as indirect. So the goal of the present presentation is to know what are the actions produced by this group of drugs and what are the clinical application as we will see okay so this is the main goal is to know the actions and clinical indication of indirectly and mixed acting sympathomimetics i have to point out mixed means that they will act in both by both mechanisms they will act as an agonist on the adrenergic receptors as you will see later and they act by increasing the release of noradrenaline as indirect. Okay, so we start with the very first example, which is amphetamine. And amphetamines is well known drug of abuse. It is a street drug. Amphetamines they are, as we know, different isomers: dextroamphetamine and levoamphetamine, and there are specific or different derivatives of amphetamine like methamphetamine which is known as ecstasy this is usually a street drug a drug of abuse abused by many uh, people especially young people and a derivatives of methamphetamine which is known as 3,4 methylene dioxy methamphetamine 3 4 methylene dioxy methamphetamine this is methamphetamine this is another derivative of amphetamine which is usually a street drug so what the amphetamine does what are the actions of amphetamine amphetamine is well known to be a releaser of most of the monoamines as we have said amphetamine will enter the nerve terminal and it will displace monoamines and we have explained that monoamines they are specific neurotransmitters like dopamine like 5-hydroxytryptamine like noradrenaline like adrenaline 
all these are known as monoamines because they 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 contain one amine in their structure okay so amphetamine is known to be a releaser of all these it will enter the adrenaline the monoaminergic nerve terminal and it will displace dopamine from its torus sites or 5-HT or noradrenaline and adrenaline okay now this takes place both in the periphery and centrally so amphetamine is expected to have a peripheral effect peripheral action because of the release of noradrenaline from the adrenergic nerve terminal and as well it will have a central action okay so we'll talk first about the peripheral action so amphetamine when it is taken it will enter the adrenergic nerve terminal which is present at the autonomic nervous system and it causes the release of noradrenaline as we know noradrenaline will act noradrenaline will act on different adrenergic receptors including alpha 1 receptor and as we have said alpha 1 is a vasoconstrictor and we have explained how this happens this alpha vasoconstriction will result in increase in blood pressure okay so this is one of the actions of amphetamine it can increase the blood pressure by releasing noradrenaline at the blood vessels and this will produce vasoconstriction this increase of blood pressure is dangerous especially in high doses for high doses of amphetamine can cause severe vasoconstriction and it can increase produce cerebral hemorrhage this is one of the actions of amphetamine it can high dose it can produce cerebral hemorrhage and cerebral hemorrhage as you know can lead to stroke and death the second action of noradrenaline release it will act on beta 1 receptors present in the heart and as we know beta 1 receptor present in the heart it will increase the heart rate producing tachycardia producing tachy Cardia. This is a normal action of amphetamine. It can increase the heart rate by peripheral action. This increase in heart rate, if the dose is high enough in high dose, amphetamine can produce tachyarrhythmia or different types of cardiac arrhythmia. And it, the cardiac arrhythmia is loss of rhythm in the heart can result in cardiac arrest if the dose is high enough cardiac arrest so all the effects of amphetamine on the periphery is is not fair favorable effect they are not good effects and they have no clinical application okay so this is the effect of amphetamine in periphery it can increase the heart rate producing tachycardia and they can produce increase the blood pressure and this in high dose can result in cerebral hemorrhage the second effect of amphetamine is its central effect central effect so amphetamines and amphetamine like drugs they increase the release of different neurotransmitter as we have said like dopamine like alpha hydroxytryptamine like noradrenaline and this will result in different central effects amphetamine is very powerful stimulant of central nervous system and it can produce in stimulation this in stimulation will result in different action including alertness where the person will become mentally alert more mentally alert and that's why amphetamine can be abused by students to increase their mental alertness it can as well decrease sleep this decrease sleep makes the person awake for a longer period of time and that's why it can be abused misused by truck drivers who drive for long distance also 
it can delay the physical fatigue. Delay the physical fatigue. That's why it can be abused by athletes and different types of sports. Also, it can decrease appetite, decrease the desire to eat. It produces inhibition of appetite, decrease appetite, and that's why it, it can be abused by obese people, people who want to lose weight, okay? All this action of amphetamine is accompanied by euphoria. So amphetamine produces produces sin stimulation accompanied by euphoria. And euphoria means the person will feel happy. Uh, his mood will be very high, high mood, okay? This euphoria is the basis. This is the Euphoria is the basis for dependence on amphetamine. So amphetamine is one of the drugs can can produce dependence, can produce dependence. This dependence is both this dependence is both of psychological type, psychological dependence, where the person will psychologically hooked to the euphoric action of the drug. The person will like the euphoric effect of amphetamine and therefore it will, uh, he will continue taking the drug, okay? Second is the physical dependence. Although this is debutable, where some people, they say that amphetamine does not produce phys physical dependence, while others, they, they say that it can produce physical dependence. And by physical dependence, we mean that the body will consider amphetamine as a normal constituent. And it will react by withdrawal syndromes when it, when it is stopped. Okay? So, amphetamine produces very clear euphoria and feeling of well-being or happiness. This euphoria is the basis for dependence, which can be psychological. Psychological means the person will be hooked to the drug to experience the euphoric effect again. Or it can be a physical dependence, and we said this is a debutable, because some people, they say, doesn't produce physical and physical dependence. We said that the body will consider the drug as a normal constituent. Uh, and it will react by withdrawal syndromes if it is stopped. Okay, so this is this is the major actions of amphetamine. Amphetamine-like drugs they have very little clinical application, and they, when they are used, they are of course a drug under certain regulation. They are not OTC. They are only prescribed under very close medical supervision. So these drugs they have. A very close medical supervision use and they are used in certain condition in narco narcolepsy narcolepsy is irresistible desire to sleep where the person will sleep in any position so amphetamine will help in this case of course this use should be done under very close medical supervision the second clinical use, it is used in the attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. which is known as ADHD. ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Usually this takes place in young children of very high, young children with very high physical activity which will stop them from learning. So amphetamine in this case, they might help and this should be done under very close medical supervision okay so why amphetamine like drugs they should be 
used under very close medical supervision. Why? Because when they are used over a long period of time, they can lead to a process of tolerance. Tolerance means the disappearance of the action of amphetamine, and the person has to increase the dose to get the same effect. Increase the dose to get the same effect. So, the initial effects will start to disappear, and the person, if he wants to experience the same euphoric effect, for example, he has to increase the dose. So, there, there would be an increase in the dose gradually till the dose can produce clear psychosis. Clear psychosis. This psychosis, in Arabic, this psychosis is accompanied by hallucination, whether video, visual hallucination, visual hallucination, and auditory hallucination. Auditory hallucination. So, amphetamine, when it is taken for a long period of time, will produce tolerance. Tolerance, that means action starts to disappear like euphoric action so the person starts increasing the dose till he gets to the, to the dose that produces clear psychosis clear psychosis means there is a visual hallucination and auditory hallucination of course this psychosis is due to the release of large amount of dopamine which act on the limbic system and it can produce psychosis okay so that's why amphetamine-like drugs are control drugs. They are only given by prescription. They are not OTC drugs. And if they are used clinically, they must be used under very close medical supervision. Okay. So this is the first drug, amphetamine. So amphetamine, it has a peripheral action where it increases heart rate and blood pressure. And this is very dangerous, especially in people who have hypertension or people who have cardiac problems like ischemic heart disease. Centrally, it can produce sinus stimulation, increasing alertness, decreasing fatigue, decreasing sleep desire, and decreasing appetite. It has very limited clinical application in treatment of necrolepsy, as we have said, and irresistible desire to sleep, and in treatment of ADHD in children. This should be done under very close medical supervision. Why? Because we said amphetamine can lead to a psychological dependence, physical dependence, and tolerance. In tolerance, we said that the person has to increase the dose to get the same effect till the dose can, that can produce clear psychosis. This psychosis can produce visual and auditory hallucination. This is, so this is the first drug, amphetamine, which act directly which act indirectly on adrenergic nerve terminal, okay, and monominergic, of course. A second drug is ephedrine. The ephedrine is a natural alkaloid. It is obtained from a natural plant. Ephedrine, actually, it has a mixed mechanism of action, mixed. What we, have, what we mean by mixed, it will act directly as an agonist on both alpha and beta receptor, and it acts indirectly through the release of noradrenaline. Okay? And as well, it will inhibit noradrenaline uptake. So, ephedrine, it has a, a dual mechanism of action. It acts directly as an agonist on alpha and beta receptor. And it acts indirectly by increasing the release of noradrenaline and inhibiting the uptake of noradrenaline. Ephedrine, it was used some time ago, but now it is completely absolute. It was used as a natural food content to increase, produce sin stimulation and to decrease appetite, but now it is completely absolute. Okay? So, ephedrine, like amphetamine, it resembles amphetamine in most of its action. It produces sin stimulation in the same manner as we have described for amphetamine. 
plus it, it produces a peripheral action. Peripheral action, as we have said, due to a direct and indirect effect, where a direct effect on alpha one receptor and beta one receptor produces vasoconstriction. And beta 1 receptor, it can produce tachycardia. That's why, that's why ephedrine has very limited clinical application in treatment of hypotension associated with bradycardia. Very, very because there are better choices but this is a rare use uh, still used but not as first line treatment it is used in treatment of hypotension associated with bradycardia there are better choices like phenylephrine and an alpha 1 agonist as we have discussed before okay a derivatives of ephedrine which is known as the pseudo ephedrine this is very pseudo ephedrine this is a derivative of ephedrine and it has the same action except that this drug it has less in a stimulant effect it is commonly used uh, locally and systemically local and systemic as in systemic in tablets or in syrups and in this case they are used as a decongestant it is used a decongestant of mucous membrane of the nose as nasal decongestant while the conjunctiva of the eye as decongestant of the conjunctiva okay so pseudofedrine it has uh, an action similar to ephedrine, it has an alpha 1 effect, produces vasoconstriction. Producing vasoconstriction, that means it can be used as a decongestant. Decongestant, as we explained last time, congestion of the mucous membrane of the nose will result in vasodilatation of the blood vessel of the mucous membrane, increasing the size of the mucous membrane, and the nose will be congested with block of the nose and uh, I, uh, conjunctiva will be congested so we use pseudoferine which is alpha 1 agonist producing vasoconstriction this vasoconstriction will decrease the congestion of the mucous membrane of the nose or conjunctiva and will, be, will decrease the congestion of both okay so pseudoferine very common used as locally eye drops or nose drops or systemically in the form of tablets or syrups or whatever and it is used in this case as a decongestant uh, it is a very common mix in uh, drugs which are used for treatment of common cold and influenza okay so this are uh, th this this uh, this is the second example of indirectly and uh, directly acting sympathomimetic Lastly, we'll talk about uh, other indirectly acting sympathomimetics, and we have many examples which are mainly used as nasal decongestant. Nasal decongestant. What we mean by nasal decongestant, as we have explained last time, in certain types of allergic reaction or in certain types of common cold many mediators will be released at the mucous membrane of the nose and this increase in mediators will result in release of histamine and histamine will produce vasodilatation increasing size vasodilatation increase size of mucous membrane volume and the size of mucous membrane will be increased and this will result in congestion of the nose 
and upper respiratory tract. Okay, so in this case, what we will do, we'll give an alpha-1 agonist. We'll produce the local vasoconstriction, and this local vasoconstriction will cause decongestion. Decongestion will make breathing easier and less irritable. Okay, the most famous examples in this case are nafazoline, very famous, which is usually used as nasal drops. Oxymetazoline. These are there are hundreds of examples because these are OTC drugs and they are commonly used in treatment of allergic reaction and the treatment of uh, symptoms of common cold. Xylometazoline as well. Okay, so these drugs they are usually used locally, locally as I or nose drops as yeah, you use as drops or sprays or spray okay what's the problem with these drugs if they are used they are OTCs as we have said over the counter drug you can obtain them without any prescription to treat symptoms of allergic reaction or symptoms due to common cold so what's the problem of these drugs if these drugs they are used Continuously, they will lead to what's known as rebound congestion. If I use, for example, these drugs repeatedly after, over a short period of time, congestion will come again. This is known as rebound congestion. Rebound congestion. Why rebound congestion takes place? Because of tolerance. And why tolerance takes place? Because of the depletion of noradrenaline stores. So what will happen? As we have said, these drugs, first they have to enter the nerve terminal. Once they enter the nerve terminal, as we have said and explained several times, they release noradrenaline. So at the beginning, there is enough noradrenaline released which will act on alpha 1 receptor and causes vasoconstriction decreasing congestion okay now by repeating administration of a short period of time noradrenaline will be depleted depleted means will be used all total use so there will be no noradrenaline to be released so what will happen? Loss of action. Loss of action, which we termed as tolerance. Loss of action, which we termed as tolerance. Of course, this will lead to rebound congestion. Congestion will come back again. Okay. So these drugs are sympathomimetics, which are used as nasal decongestant. They should be advised not to be used repeatedly over a short period of time because of the rebound congestion phenomena okay why rebound congestion takes place because of the depletion of noradrenaline stores so in summary we can say that amphetamine like drugs have central and peripheral effects produce tolerance and dependence and they are classified as drug of abuse they are abused by certain people they have limited clinic application in narcolepsy and attention deficient hyperactivity disorder the ephedrine as we said as amphetamine used sometimes in some cases of hypotension associated with bradycardia pseudoephedrine is commonly used in preparation oral and local preparation as decongestant, very famous OTC drug. Other decongestants are nafazoline like drugs, which are OTC drugs used as nasal decongestants and can produce rebound congestion if they are used over a short period of time. So these are very briefly the indirectly acting sympathomimetics. So tell Next presentation, I hope you stay in peace, keep away from coronavirus. I wish you all 
good health and prosperity. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.